Hey everybody, long time no see. Uh, honestly, it's because I haven't been doing a lot of piping lately. I now, of course, have to play catch up. It's how it always works. Uh, but I've got, I don't know, eight or more weeks to get this going. So, a couple of updates. It now looks like this outside. Next thing is I finally found the pieces of my dry bagpipe. Uh, so I scrambled all over the place. I tried to find it. So I looked in the basement, I looked in my room, I looked at the office all over the place and I was really starting to lose it. And then I remembered two years ago uh, when Eric Olette was playing the solos, he asked to borrow my bagpipe, uh, my, uh, my stocks with the synthetic bag on there. <clears throat> so I finally, finally just on a whim texted him. I was like, you have my bag, don't you? And sure enough, he did. So we got those in the mail. Finally, those are here. So what we're dealing with is we've now got the bananas, lovingly called the bananas, which are the Octabui moisture control systems. Okay. Now, right now, the um, silicone gel that goes inside these Okay, is in here, in the oven. Uh, hopefully that's the right thing to do. By the way, if anyone knows better that I shouldn't be doing that, let me know. Uh, but these guys sort of come together. I'm trying to do this one-handed as I hold the camera. Yeah. Baby zone. They come together, the silicone would go in there if it were ready. And then these go in here and attach to the bottom of the stock like so. Um, and it's sort of a, it's, it is sort of a, you know, an extension or a variation on the classic moisture control system, you know, with the canister and the hoses. Uh, what's cool about this is these are a little bit more portable, like a little bit more uh, adjustable maybe perhaps, and hopefully I think give slightly better harmonic response. You always get decreased resonance slash harmonics on the drones. Someday I'm gonna prove that. I think most pipers agree on that, but uh, the drones theoretically stay dry. Um, so so uh, you can have a look at the uh, Piper's Dojo Facebook wall. And look for posts, what's today? November 2nd, 2020. 16, that is the year, I think. Uh, you could look at those videos. That's what things were sounding like today. Definitely regretting not playing enough lately, for sure, uh, without question. It's just life has sort of, uh, you know, prohibited me from playing enough. Definitely regretting it and definitely not quite comfortable yet on the new bag, right? I'm used to playing the sheepskin bag and whatever, so I'm not quite comfortable there. Uh, what else do we have to cover? Working on my tunes. Again, you can see some of the work I did today, just sort of a generic practice session where I didn't really do anything all that focused other than just get things going. Okay, so talk to Bruce Gandy a little bit. There are my silicone gels. I hope I didn't do them too hot. He said only 225 oven temp, but maybe he's talking about Celsius too. Strange people. Canadians. Ooh, that's hot. So maybe 225 is close to a 400, which is what I did them at. They were in there for maybe 20 minutes or so. There they are, silicon gels. He, he said I want to get them in a plastic bag uh, before too long. So plastic bag, um, that'll keep any moisture in the air from sort of working their way into the rocks. That would obviously be not what we want. Uh, then hopefully tomorrow they should work. Now, in the long run, I'll get several sets of the bananas, if that's what I'm going to go with, so that, you know, I can do several batches at once, put it in the pipe, it's going to be pretty good. So I'm kind of excited about that. Right now, though, they're like extremely hot, so I've got to give that a couple minutes. Perhaps I will get something to eat in the meantime. Okay, so I think that it's cool enough now that they're not going to like melt the actual plastic on these guys. 
So I kind of agree with Bruce conceptually. I'm going to do what he says, which is I've got to get these gels um, in the actual thing. Now, my hope with using the aluminum foil is that it could also be a bit of a siphon. Um, but <clears throat> I'm out of practice. So we're going to have to see how well this actually works. And I need to try not to get silicone gels all over the floor. Okay, here they are. Going with the bag, ready for tomorrow's session. Obviously, it would be much better to be able to do that in a batch of five sets, right? That would be amazing. Um, a lot of people use moisture control systems all the time. I'm a strong unbeliever in moisture control systems in the vast majority of situations. If you're a beginner or an intermediate or even an advanced player, um, my sort of litmus test, what I tell my students is, um, will your drones drifting a tiny bit out of tune be the difference between winning and losing a contest? I mean, very, very slightly drifting. Nine times out of 10, even at the advanced level, the answer is no. When you're in high level professional contests, the answer becomes yes. And that's where moisture control systems become very important, right? Drones drifting even slightly out of tune at a contest like Kansas City, which I'm hoping to play at, uh, which I'm planning to play at in January, right? If my drones drift slightly out of tune, that will probably take me from uh, the prize list to out of the prize list, that fact alone. Right, so you have to do it. The next thing, the final thing that I'll say here is moisture control systems are only, only work and they're only reliable if you always start in the exact same state. So you cannot play a practice session with totally dry rocks, totally dry silicone gels or whatever you're using, and then not nuke them and practice again the next time. You'll get a different result, okay? You'll get a different result, the rocks will be more wet, the drones will be um, going out of tune sooner that second time than the first time. So you always have to start with dry moisture control. So nine, nine out of 10 people who play moisture control systems kind of all the time and they quote rely on them, they're not nuking their stuff regularly. So you're not actually really getting that much moisture control. And at the end of the day, you're sacrificing so much tone, right? And so much, so you, you're losing so many experience points of not getting that, that pure, you know, bagpipe setup, that pure tone, right? It's just not worth it in the long run for the vast majority of people. Just a little spiel. That's my personal opinion. I'm not bashing moisture control systems. That's just the way that I operate because I know uh, sheep, you know, plain old sheep skin bag or high bag is going to give you much better tone uh, than a moisture control system. All my experience tells me that. So unless you need the moisture control system, you don't use it. Okay, uh, that's going to be it. Just it's sort of an informational transitional vlog today, but I hope you found it kind of cool and fun. Uh, if I get a chance to get more footage today, I'll put it in. But otherwise, that's probably the end of today's episode.